Hey everybody, it's Mark Schultz here and we're doing a LinkedIn Live and tonight, again, it's a midweek edition of Recovery in Aviation. And the topic for tonight is, uh, are you looking forward to normal? All right. Hey, but before I get going, I want to tell you about a special edition that we have coming up this Wednesday where guest speaker Darko Todorovic, he's the director of uh, Unisys Travel and Transportation, is going to be with us live on Wednesday. Wednesday, a midweek session of LinkedIn Live. That's nine o'clock Pacific time. And we're going to be talking about how is the economic downturn affecting businesses that are supporting aviation. It's gonna be a really good session. It's a special edition. And it's gonna be discussions with Darko Todorovic. He's a leader in travel transportation. He's based in Madrid. Um, and so uh, it's going to be a really exciting event, a lot of really good information. He's been in the industry for many, many years now. A lot of you know him with Unisys. Don't miss this event. It's going to be really exciting. Hey, um, before we get going, um, just remember, um, in a second, I'm going to come right back and we're going to talk about, are you looking forward to normal? All right. Hey, just for a minute, I want you to think about this, all right? So what really is normal, all right? Let me ask you this question. Is it the way things were before or is it the way things will be, all right? You know, many of us are in uh, home quarantine or in uh, stay-at-home orders and uh, we're not working or we're underemployed or people are not fully engaged with all your business colleagues. But the reality of it is, is a, because of the contraction of the industry right now, a lot of us have you know, some extra time on our hands. Now you might say, well, I don't really have any extra time on my hands. Well, from a business perspective, you know, a lot of us have some extra time on our hands. And this is a perfect opportunity for us to take a look at and, uh, and consider the events that are happening around us and how are they affecting your business? How are they affecting the industry? And what does that mean to your business? What does that mean to moving forward? As we talk about recovery in aviation, we want to take an extremely positive perspective because it's leaders in the industry like you and I and all those around us that are going to be able to influence the industry and to be able to move forward faster. We're going to be able to accelerate the industry and to be able to move it into recovery faster. We need to help people to have greater confidence in the uh, air transport industry and that air, air transportation is going to be safe and it's going to be efficient and that we are going to be able to thrive in that environment. Exactly when is that? I'm not sure, but I know that we as leaders will have the ability to be able to accelerate that if we enthusiastically engage. But number one, I wanna start off by saying lessons learned. Think about it a minute, all right? We look around us and we take a look at what's happening around us and we need to get ready for what's coming next, all right? Don't wait. We need to be making analysis and assessment of those things that are happening around us. What's happening to your market? Is your product still the right product? Do you need to change your product? Will the people that are using your products be different? Will the services that you're offering be different? But we need to definitely use this time, this opportunity, be able to reflect and to be able to do lessons learned on the things that are happening around us. If you do not look at what's happening around you, if you say, I'm going to stay where I am, your business will have a very challenging time in the new normal, all right? Um, next is, is that, you know, as human beings, it's really hard for us to change. Um, you know, it's just difficult. It's hard for us to let something go that you've always known about. We've always known something to be a particular way Things have always been a certain way, and events in, in history have caused things to change, whether it be the economic downturn of uh, 2008 through 2010, whether it be 9-11. You know, we had to find ways to adapt to our businesses. We had to change our businesses, and we had to adjust. Looking at what's happening around you is extremely important, but we have this propensity toward just staying in one place. We don't want to change. We say it was working before, it will work again. How do you know it's going to work again? Listen, if the number of passengers that are traveling are less for quite some time, 
are you not going to make changes? Because that means that aircraft are going to be flying less. That means that less maintenance is going to be required. That means that left air, less aircraft will be in the sky. We need to evaluate what's happening. Will it be large aircraft? Will it be, will it be regional aircraft? Will it be business aircraft? We need to look at our market. We need to look at our people in our market. We need to look at our products and services. Listen, I'm reinventing a lot of the things that we're doing. All right. I am absolutely convinced that I am not going to let my business fail. I'm reevaluating what I'm doing. I'm diversifying myself even further. I'm picking up things in different industries, actually, and I'm focusing on um, activities that are needed by the marketplace today. All right. I know it's really hard to let go of what you're doing because it's really comfortable when you're sitting in one place and you can just keep doing what I've been doing for 30 or 40 years, but it's time to reevaluate. If you don't want your business to fail, it's time to reevaluate. Listen, the next thing, the third thing is, is that certain changes around us just don't happen. Many times they have to be forced, all right? And, and you ask yourself, well, you know, what does that really mean, all right? Well, a lot of times we're sitting here and, and we don't like change or we want to do something that we've always done, but you know we have to we have to force ourselves to make changes. Now consider for a minute that uh, if you like to work out in the gym, you know before all this happened, I, I used to like to go to the gym and work out in the gym. And uh, and you know if, if you want to increase your muscles, or if you want to increase your strength, or if you want your body to be stronger, we have to go beyond where we're comfortable being. We have to take ourselves further. We have to lift more weights. We have to do more exercise. We have to do more than what we've done in the past. Well, listen, our businesses are, are exactly the same. Is, is that if we want to be successful, we have to go beyond where we're comfortable and we have to look more at what's happening around us. And, uh, you know, I got some questions coming in right now. And, and uh, yes, it is aviation related. So you're asking yourself, Lewis, you said, uh, is this aviation related? Yes. Um, you know, I've been in aviation for 40 years. And, uh, and um, one of the things that we're doing is that we're on a regular basis. We're bringing, um, uh, we're bringing uh, experts from the industry uh, in to interview and to talk about um, uh, changes and what we have to do to be able to recover in aviation. All right. And so the things that I'm talking about right now are related to what do we have to do in our businesses to be able to, to be successful. And so, you know, Lewis, you asked here, um, thanks for your question here. I really appreciate it. Is, is that what is a new normal in aviation? Well, you know, we don't exactly know just yet, but I'll tell you some of the things that I'm seeing right now that I'm seeing that potentially will be new normals. All right. Is, is that it's looking like, you know, domestic travel, say within EU or domestic travel within the United States is probably going to be the first to begin to increase or to recover. All right. And you ask yourself, well, why is it domestic travel that's going to be the first? All right, and uh, um, and it's because you know uh, uh, international organizations or countries are going to have to agree on what are the standards for passengers entering into that country, or what are the standards for letting an aircraft into that country. And since each of us independently, each countries independently decide what it is that they're going to do, then you know that's probably going to become a new normal. Now, a number of years ago when I used to travel, I used to carry around a yellow card in my passport for, for a yellow fever um, vaccination. And I had to show that in different places when I uh, had to prove that I had a yellow fever vaccination. I haven't carried that for, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 years now because it just hasn't been a, a requirement. But there may be new normals or there may be new requirements that come up that are driving us um, to uh, to change what we're doing, to adapt what we're doing. So there's there's likely going to be you know new cabin crew standards like wearing masks and and uh, and uh, there may be less food served and um, there may be uh, you know different practices and procedures that are occurring. And as far as passengers are concerned, um, you know uh, there there may be different seating configurations. There may be all sorts of different things that are basically happening. So um, let's see, Lewis, you're asking another question. You're great. Thank you very much. And uh, this is live. And if you have some questions, you know, go ahead and throw them out there because uh, we're actually monitoring these questions. So my business is aircraft engines and power plants, especially CFM 56. It's a backbone of the A320 and the 737. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, uh, many years ago, I started working uh, at uh, Northwest Airlines, actually, and they had the CFM 56 on the A320 when they were being delivered. And uh, when I worked at Boeing, um, we had uh, we had uh, the CFM, CFM 56s on the uh, 737s. And so that is a uh, an aircraft which is the backbone. Now, um, exactly what's going to happen with the uh, the power plant um, industry right now 
you know, I'm not really sure, but we're going to have, you know, less aircraft being flown. There's going to be less cycles. Some of the aircraft are going to drop out of the market. And so some of the engine mixes and some of the spare parts that are out there are going to change. And so we need to be evaluating our businesses and saying, hey, if there's different spares in the market, do I need to readjust my business? If there's different overhaul requirements, do I need to adjust my overhaul requirements? And so what I'm really saying is that we need to be looking at our businesses. We need to be looking at what's happening in the market and how does that directly affect our businesses, all right? You know, if you're a repair station, like a 145 repair station, and you're selling parts and services, absolutely, positively, you're going to be affected. And so you need to, you know, lessons learned. You need to be looking out there and saying what's happening in the industry and how does that affect me? How does that affect the MRO business, all right? So another question, how did, what about the MRO business? Yeah. MRO businesses are being affected. Maybe right now there's a lot of maintenance being done because aircraft are on the ground and the airlines want to get ahead. Maybe there's some modifications that are occurring. Maybe there's seat modifications that are occurring. Maybe there's cargo modifications that are occurring. But you know that during the summertime, if those loads are going to be low, typically the MROs are low in the summertime. It's going to be even worse at that time. And so we don't want to talk about you know, what the problems are as much as what we want to do is learn from those challenges and learn from those lessons and say, what do we have to do? How do we have to adjust our business? Listen, if you're a business that focuses on passenger aircraft, maybe we need to go out and seek modifications or maybe we need to go out and seek defense or maybe we need to go out and seek you know, cargo modifications. All right. I got another question here from uh, Harvish. Uh, what's he say? Um, how easy or difficult will it be to be social distancing on an aircraft? Wow. You know, um, that's really super hard. Listen, if you've been in the industry for any period of time, you know that the load factors are extremely narrow and the, the margins um, on, uh, uh, on profitability on the aircraft are very narrow. And if we have load factors that are dramatically lower and we're flying the same aircraft, um, we're not going to be able to make money if we have this social distancing. I mean, think about it is, is that we're all sitting right next to each other, middle seats, the whole the whole thing. If you cleared out the middle seats on the aircraft, you know, it would be really difficult to make money on those airplanes. You know what's going to happen is, is that the uh, the fares are going to go way up and, uh, uh, and um, you know, uh, the aircraft that were making money before are no longer going to make money anymore. And so, you know, one of the big challenges is, is that how are we going to deal with that? Now, um, you take a look at what some of the airlines are doing proactively right now to be able to address this. One of the things that they're doing is, is that Delta, for example, came out with a really great uh, Delta Clean program. Um, I've seen Alaska. I've seen Emirates. I've seen Etihad. You know, airlines all around the world right now are reevaluating what do we have to do to be able to ensure that the flying public is comfortable flying on the airplanes. And some of the things I've seen them doing are: we're going to spend a lot of time cleaning the aircraft. We're going to uh, we're going to pull back on some of our food service. We're going to um, ensure that the aircraft are deep cleaned much more than they ever were before. Um, people wearing masks. Um, I've, I've heard talk about uh, air airflow and recirculation, some of the requirements for that. And um, EASA came out with some disinfecting guidelines. And so we're seeing a lot of different things happening, you know, to be able to address what we're calling this, you know, new normal. All right. You know, so so the thing is, like I said, number two today was it's really hard to let something go that you've always known. If you don't let go of what you knew normal used to be, you're going to find yourself without um, a product or a service that really addresses the new normal. All right. So, um, uh, you know, it's really important that we're reevaluating. All right. And like I said, it's certain changes are really hard and they have to be really forced. All right. So, you know, we need to look at this very difficult time and listen, you can choose for this difficult time to be a curse or you can choose for this difficult time to be a blessing. All right. And what do I mean? All right. I choose for this to be a blessing is what I really do. All right. And uh, hey, listen, there's some guys out there that are doing some great questions and uh, really appreciate, you know, Harvish. Uh, he says, thanks, Mark. You know, I really appreciate that. And I've had some good questions from uh, Lewis. And, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, so uh, so let's see here. Uh, here's a question from Lewis. He says, uh, seriously, you know, clearing the middle seat um, is just something emotional and uh, uh and it's not really making it healthy. Um, we need to work on the air cleaning system. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, Lewis. Is uh, you know, um, uh, I know that that uh, that we think maybe clearing the middle seat might work. And I've seen some pictures of aircraft with X's on the middle seats. And um, you know, I just don't really think that's practical because if we said six feet is social distancing, 
man, you'd have to clear what? You'd have to clear three rows and put one guy in the middle. Look, that just doesn't work. So we have to come up with alternatives on what we're going to do basically to uh, address um, the uh, the cleanliness of the aircraft and address, you know, the uh, the ability to be able to fly aircraft, right? So, um, you know, I, I just tell you is, is that this is a very important time where we need to, we need to look at what, what is the new normal going forward? And, uh, and I, I say that, you know, we, a lot of times we say to ourselves, I, want, I just want to get back to normal, all right? Listen, there's no going back to normal. There's no such thing as going back to normal. There's only going forward to the new normal as our normal, all right? And we need to use this, you know, time to do lessons learned and look around us and decide what's coming next. We need to make the really hard decisions of being able to move forward and uh, and to evaluate our businesses and 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 you know listen um, things there's changes that are being forced on you right you can't resist those changes you have to basically assess those changes understand what you have to do to reevaluate your business and you move forward look you can't control what's happening around you right let it go just let it go right um, focus on what you're going to do in this new normal right listen leaders lead. All right. Many years ago, when I went to my uh, MBA program, the uh, head of the department stood up on the very first day and said, one of the strongest characteristics of good leaders is resilience. All right. And if you are a strong moving forward leader, you are going to be resilient and you are going to stand up and it's time to lead. Listen, it's time to lead in aviation. It's time to present an enthusiastic message where together we can move forward and we can present um, you know, leadership, we can do it with enthusiasm and we can look for new opportunities to lead. Listen, I, I have been in aviation since I was probably two years old, right? I, I have my, my student pilot license when I was 15 and a half and I flew at that time and I've been in aviation ever since. Listen, aviation isn't just a passion for me. It's an obsession for me, all right? And, and uh, countries need air commerce in order for them to be developed and to move forward. And, uh, and all around us, um, it's necessary for, um, for, for commerce and for people to travel and for them to connect. And so really the demand for travel really hasn't changed. We just have to present the situation where people are comfortable flying in the airplane and, uh, and, um, and they feel like they're safe and it's efficient. And so as leaders in the industry, we need to find ways to be able to create a safe and efficient environment for those that are around us, right? And that's how our businesses are going to be successful. Listen, um, this was just a really quick midweek discussion about leading and how we can you know, be successful in aviation. But what I want to do is I want to, again, invite you to our regular Friday broadcast where I bring leaders in the industry um, who are knowledgeable in the industry and bringing out new ideas for you to think about and how you can move forward and how you can um, grasp those ideas and to be able to um, uh, and to be able to grasp uh, what it's going to take for your business to be successful. And in those Friday interviews at nine o'clock Pacific time, there'll be LinkedIn live broadcasts just like this one. And uh, listen, if you want to find us and how you can find some of the broadcasts on the different channels we're on, just go type in uh, hashtag digital aircraft in a search and you'll find all the ways you can get in touch with us. All right. But we have regular discussions and they're increasing more and more now with leaders in aviation. And together we are going to be the recovery of aviation. What do we talk about on those broadcasts? We talk about what's happening right now. What do I have to do? What are the factors of success? Listen, I will not let my business be a casualty, all right? So, um, hey, I got one more question that came in, and uh, Lewis asked another question here again. And Lewis, you were asking, uh, how are the airlines going to make us feel comfortable to fly again? Listen, here's what I think, all right? I think it's doing all the things that are necessary to be able to address the problems that we have around us right now. Look, at, I've seen... I've seen uh, testing in Emirates right now. Um, they started out by doing uh, COVID testing before passengers are getting on airplanes. I know there's challenges and difficulties with that, but they're going to figure it out. All the airlines are looking at how they deep clean aircraft right now and how they make sure that they're communicating that. Um, Delta Airlines, I saw a really good video by Bill Lynch. I think he's the chief uh, communications officer. Uh, something like that. And uh, he did a very good job of communicating to people what the airline is doing to be able to create a clean and safe aircraft. We're looking at air filtration. We're looking at masks. We're looking at food. Um, you know, we're looking at uh, all the different things that would be necessary to cause people to be comfortable in, uh, in flying again. So I think those things are really super critical and super important 
um, that we do those things. But listen, um, we are not going to let this industry be a casualty. The demand for travel is there. And I'm challenging all of you out there to be a leader and to move forward and to be able to enthusiastically evaluate your businesses and find new ways for us to help aviation to move forward and to be successful. So I challenge you to do that. And I challenge you to join us on Fridays at nine o'clock uh, for our discussions with industry leaders on how we can innovate the future. Together, we're going to fly to new heights and you are going to be part of that. This week, remember, I have a special, special guest on Wednesday and it's Darko Todorovic from, um, uh, he's the director of Unisys Travel and Transportation. And on Wednesday at nine o'clock Pacific, he's going to be here um, and I'm gonna be doing an interview with him. And we're gonna talk about how is the economic downturn affecting businesses that support aviation. Join me on Wednesday and I'm looking forward to having you with us. Thanks for joining me tonight for this live broadcast. And I will see you again soon. Fair winds and following seas to you. Have a great day.